to sample space diagrams. Uh, just before we start, just a reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so um, the first thing we need to think about is what a sample space actually does. Um, the whole point of a sample space is um, a way of uh, showing all of the possible outcomes when more than one event uh, is combined. So if we get two events happening at the same time, what is the combined result of those, um, of those experiments? So the uh, usual uh, starting point would be with some dice. So if two dice are rolled and the total of the dice is recorded, show all of the possible outcomes using a suitable diagram. Now a sample space is the suitable diagram here and it looks actually just like a table. Now what we have are the two different dice that we are using and we want to first start off with the different results we could get on each of them. So obviously we could get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. And we could get that on the first dice, so we need 6 columns, but we also could get the same results on the second dice, so we need 6 rows as well. And then all we've been asked to do is we've been asked for the totals. And so what we're actually going to do is just use this as an addition grid. So we'll have 1 on the first dice, with one on the second dice would give us a total of two. Two on the set first dice with one on the second would give us a total of three, and so on. Three with one, four with one, five with one, six with one. And all that's going to do is we're going to keep adding in exactly the same way. So on one on the first dice with two on the second dice gives us a total of three. Two on the first dice with two on the second dice gives us a total of four. Now, I could uh, go through each of these, but let's just uh, quickly cut to the overall table. There we go, that's the uh, final value of this table. Um, all of the scores have been added together in order to show all of the different results. Um, you may notice from this that we've got um, actually a nice little bit of um, almost symmetry. We've got a nice diagram uh, diagonal here of all sevens, and then we get all sixes, all fives, all fours, threes, twos, and then on the other side, all eights, nines, tens, elevens, and then a final twelve. Another common um, common idea it would be flipping coins. And so if I've got two coins and I flip them at the same time and record the results, um, either he uh, heads or tails, um, for each, show them in a diagram. So each, uh, each coin could have a head or a tail shown when we uh, flip it. And so when we start drawing the table, we want to think about the 2p coin first. Now the 2p coin could get a head or a tail. And so we need a column for each, a column for head and a column for tail. With the 10 pence, exactly the same thing. We could get a head on the 10 pence or a tail on the 10 pence. Now we need to start thinking about what the combinations were. Now in the previous example, it was easy. We could just add the two together, but because these are letters and because they are um, actually representing heads and tails, we just need to write the two letters combined. So heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. Now the drawing of the table, that is the first stage of all of these questions, but generally they do then relate to probability as well, because the whole idea is we want to know how many different outcomes that are possible so that we can work out some probabilities about the situation. So we're gonna go back to the first example of the um, two dice and their scores being added. And we want to look for the probability of getting a total score of seven. So the first thing we actually need to know is, well, how many different outcomes are possible? Because that will be the bottom of our fraction when it comes to the, um, comes to the probability. Now, if we have a count up, we can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. There are 36 different outcomes. Now, adding uh, just by counting along, that would be one way of finding that answer. But the other way would be to think of how many different outcomes there are in each case. There are six on this dice and six on this dice. So six times six would give me the number of spaces inside of the diagram, the number of different outcomes. So that's another way of getting that value. 
Now, the question was, what was the probability of getting a 7? So the total score of 7, there's 1 here, 1 here, 1 here, 1 here, 1 here, and 1 here. How many different ways are there of getting a total of 7? Well, there are 6 different ways. We should be thinking about um, simplifying fractions here as well. 6 out of 36 is actually 1 sixth. We're then asked, what is the probability of getting a score more than 8? So the key word here is more than. As it is saying more than, that does not include 8. So we're not taking into account these 8s. We are starting with 9. So we've got all of the 9s are more than 8, all of the 10s, and the 11s, and the 12. And so the... Um, the total number that we've got there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 out of 36. And again, simplifying, this time we just need half the numbers, 5 out of 18. And finally, what is the probability of scoring more on the first dice than the second? Now this is a little bit more uh, more tricky. We need to think about uh, which ones we are actually dealing with. So it's scoring more on the first dice, dice one, than we do on dice two. So straight away, we can get rid of certain values on this table. So anywhere where we scored the same on both dice, well, that is not going to work. So this diagonal, that is where we scored the same on both, so we can get rid of those. And then we just need to think which side of this line would we be scoring more on the first dice. Well, here, this number 3, I scored 2 on dice 1 and 1 on dice 2. They are the ones where I've scored more. So it's actually everything along this section. All of these positions in the table, I have scored more on dice one than on dice two. And we just need to work out how many that is. That's five, nine, 12, 14, 15 different cases. So there are 15 cases where I score more on dice one out of the 36 that are possible. Now again, just in terms of uh, simplifying, both of these are multiples of three. So we can divide by 3, we'll have 5 out of 12. Back to the coins, um, we've got our table, our sample space uh, drawn for the different outcomes when we flip a 2p and a 10p. So what is the probability of getting two heads? Well, if we have a look in our table, the first thing again we need to know is how many different outcomes there are. There are actually four different outcomes. There are head head, head tail, tail head, tail tail. And therefore there are four different results possible. So my probability is going to be out of four. And the next question is how many of them are getting two heads? Well, it's just this one here where we get a head on both. So it is one quarter. Then what is the probability of getting one of each, a head and a tail? Well, in that case, we are dealing with getting tail and a head or heads and a tail, so there are two different ways of doing it. There are two ways out of four. And so that is the same as a half. We've actually got a half chance of getting one of each. And lastly, what is the probability of getting at least one head? Now again, we've got a key phrase there, at least one head. That means we must have at least one, so um, here, there is a head, and here, there is a head. But also, this final version, head, head, would count because we've got at least one. In fact, we've got two, so we've got more than we were needing, but we've got at least one. And so there are three different ways of doing it out of four. And so our last example uh, comes down to spinners. Now, this time you'll notice that um, they're not the same type of item. So in the previous examples, we had two dice which both had six sides or we had the two coins which both had two coins this time I have a spinner that has four different results on it 
and I have a spinner that has three different results on it. And so we need to think carefully about how we're going to draw a sample space in this case. And it all comes down to what we were looking at originally. We need to draw ourselves a table. And that table needs to have all of the different results for the first spinner across the top. So I could get a one, I could get a three, I could get a three again, or I could get a five. On the second spinner, I only have three options. I could get two, I could get three, and I could get five. And what it's actually asking here is um, the spun and the total of the two spinners is recorded. So again, like we did with the, um, with the dice, we need to fill in this table to say what the total scores would be. So one plus two will be three, two plus three is five, five, seven, four, six, six, eight, six, eight, eight, ten. And it asks, what is the probability that the total score is a prime number? So the first thing we need to recognize here is what does a prime number mean? It is any number which can be uh, only divided by itself and one. It has exactly two factors. Um, so three, well, that is only in the three times table and the one times table. So that works. Five also. Seven also works. Four, well, that is in the two times table. So it does not work. Six is in the three times table. Eight is in the four times table. Six and eight are still there again. And 10. 10 is in the two times table. So all of these values do not work, only the top four. And so my probability must be four out of, and the last question is how many? Well, there were four options on one spinner and three on the other. Four times three is 12. And as always, we want to simplify as well. So four over 12 is the same as a third. And so finally, we come to the exam question. This was on the Edexcel paper in November 2017, and it was foundation paper one. Um, and in the question, we are told that there are three cards in box A and three cards in box B. There is a number on each card. Ryan takes a random card from box A and a card from box B. He adds together the numbers on the two cards to get the total score. Work out the probability that the total score is an odd number. Now, if we really wanted to, we could just make a big list of all of the different totals. So three added with nine, three added with two, three added with three, um, and we could do that. Now, the problem with that is you may end up missing some important values. And so this is why a sample space comes in handy. It just makes sure that you definitely get all of the different results that you are requiring. So in this case, I'm going to look at box A and I'm going to look at box B and just put down the different results that I can expect. So I can get a three, I can get a four, and I can get a five. In box B, I can get a nine, I can get two, and I can get three. And so what we've been told is he takes them, uh, takes them at random and he adds them together. And so we're gonna do the same as we have done with previous examples, nine plus three, nine plus four, 9 plus 5, 2 plus 3, 2 plus 4, and 2 plus 5, and 3 plus 3, 3 plus 4, and 3 plus 5. And it asks, what is the probability that the total score is an odd number? So if we go to the, back to our table, well, 12 is even, 13 is odd, 14 even, 5 is odd, 6 is even, 7 is odd, six is even, seven is odd, and eight is even. And so we know from that that we have four that work. And the question is out of how many? Well, there were three options here and three options here. So three times three is nine. Our answer is four ninths. Mm -hmm.